I'm Aaron Forbes, Director of Player Development for PowerCore XL. Today we are covering Part 2A of Identifying and Maximizing Core Structure, the Foundation of Core Strength. Let's get started. First, let's cover some of the definition of the terms on words that are commonly used with core training. These words are often used interchangeably, however, they are quite different in terms of training. The first term is core structure. Core structure is the correct S-shaped spinal structure that the human body most optimally functions from in Earth's gravity. The second term is core stability. Core stability is the one core structure the human body most safely and optimally functions from, combined with highly strengthened core musculature, allowing for proper direction and range of pull of the core musculature. The third term is orthopedic. Orthopedic is the restoration and preservation of proper skeletal spinal structure and function. In this slide, you can see an example of what is known as spondylolisthesis, or in the sports medicine field, a spondy. The key to this injury is resetting or moving the anterior translation of the pars fracture back to its correct alignment. By resetting or moving the vertebrae back to its original location would constitute an orthopedic effect. On a side note, a third of the NFL players have this condition. If you or someone you train has this condition, you know how debilitating it can be. This just happens to be the number one reason the PowerCore XL1000 was developed, to reset or move this vertebrae back into place. It orthopedically restores spondings. Anyway, that's one of the great benefits of the equipment, but let's keep moving. Another question I asked the audience during my seminars is this. My core structure consists of my skeletal bone and vertebrae. How do I make my core structure stronger? Ponder that for a moment. Now here is where we start exposing the reality of how core structure works. Your core structure, specifically each of the individual vertebrae, is a lever arm. Yes, that's right. Much like the two pictures you see here depicting lever arms, your core structure works just like those. Confused? Don't worry, as we go along, this will become very clear to you. Back to question number one. How do I make my core structure stronger? Here's the answer. By making the lever arm so that it possesses mechanical advantage. In simple terms, a lever arm that produces more force than the effort to create that force. So, how do you know what mechanical advantage looks like? Well, here's what mechanical disadvantage looks like. In order to just hold this lever even, you would need to produce much more force than the amount you would be holding up. Who would want to use a tool that put you in a position of mechanical disadvantage? No one. Here's Michael Johnson again. Michael Johnson is a perfect example of an athlete with great core structure that has mechanical advantage. Still confused? Hold on, we're getting there. Just remember what we've covered so far. Here's the individual who has mechanical disadvantage. His core structure is a lever arm that looks like the one next to his picture. Now, be ready because the next slide is going to reveal exactly how this relates to your core structure. Take a look at the slide very closely. First, examine the individual on the left. You can see this individual possesses great core structure in the lower back. Now look closely at the two vertebrae. The L2, L3 region of the lower back is known as the stress line of the lower back. This pivot point, if you will, is where athletes must have mechanical advantage in order to have great core structure. You can now see the lever arm comes into play. The orange fulcrum, or pivot point, is the center of the disc. The distance from the interspinalis muscle to the center point of the fulcrum or the middle of the disc is considerably longer than the distance from the center of the disc to the center of the mass of the body. Having great core structure is the only way an athlete can possess mechanical advantage. This is the key to strengthening your core structure. Back to Michael Johnson again. Great mechanical advantage equals great core structure. Here's an athlete we worked with on our orthopedic strength training equipment, the PowerCore XL1000. 
As you can see, he did not have great core structure when he started with us. You can see his center of mass is forward or anterior of where it needed to be. This caused a greater distance from the center of his L2, L3 disc to the point of his center of mass versus the distance from the center of the L2, L3 disc to the inner spinalis. In other words, his lever arm was at mechanical disadvantage. His body was working harder just to hold himself upright than it needed to. Here's our athlete after eight weeks on the PowerCore XL1000 orthopedic strength training equipment. As you can see, not only did he maximize his core structure in his lower back, he also maximized his core structure in his neck. His center of mass has moved into the correct position, and the lever arm at his L2-3 vertebrae verified he was in a position of mechanical advantage. He developed his average core structure into great core structure. If you care to read this athlete's testimony, you can go to the following link at www.powercoreabs.com slash Isaac Bond. Let's take a close look up at exactly what this interspinalis muscle looks like and what its job is. The interspinalis functions to extend the vertebral column. However, if your core structure is in mechanical disadvantage, the interspinalis is contracted. So, how can it contract even further to extend the vertebrae? The answer is obvious. It cannot, and therefore, it has lost its ability to function properly. This is just one of many side effects of average core structure producing mechanical disadvantage. Again, as you can see, mechanical advantage from possessing great core structure. Michael Johnson, great mechanical advantage, a direct result of great core structure. The muscular individual, he looks great, but possesses weak core structure, and that means he is in a state of mechanical disadvantage. Tight hamstrings, tight lumbar, tight hips, tight psoas, and greater risk for lower back injury. Here is the bottom line. Mechanical disadvantage has to produce 15 times greater muscle effort to perform the same task. Which core structure do you want? Which core structure is going to go the distance? The one on the left that's in a constant state of contraction and fatigue, or the one on the right that's at rest and ready to perform when called upon? The choice, of course, is obvious. Next, in part 2B, we will demonstrate and explain the orthopedic exercises that are proven to transform average core structure into great core structure. Common core exercises. They're all great at strengthening core musculature. Their focus is on the core musculature, not on the core structure. The orthopedic setup on the PowerCore XL1000 puts an orthopedic effect on the spine known as global adaptation. By doing this setup over the orthopedic pad, the PowerCore XL puts the lumbar spine in an orthopedic position, causing it to grow from average core structure into great core structure. By utilizing the upper foreheads of the rectus abdominals and the obliques, the spine gets worked through a maximum range of motion, extension, and flexion, causing it to grow or transform from average core structure into great core structure. Right. How's that feel? Feels like it kicks my ass. I like it. The pelvic tilt's main benefits are orthopedically resetting spondylolisthesis in the lower back and eliminating bulge discs. Now as you're doing that, what are you feeling? Uh, a little tension in the back of my pelvis. Okay. And, I mean, it starts with tension just because I feel tight right there right now. But as I'm working, I can feel that range of motion start to, you know, it's warming up my pelvic, my spine right there. Okay. And I can feel relief. Like I'm actually able to bring my head back now a little bit more and 
arch myself a little bit better. Each rotation that I'm driving on this, I feel a little bit more range of motion. Uh, I feel that tension releasing. Um, I do feel a little fatigue in the lower abdominal uh, muscle system right now, where I'm actually pulling the muscle in as I create the thrust of the pelvic tilt here. Are you getting any uh, stretch in your hammies? Yeah, I can feel tension actually, like they're fatiguing right, right below the, the glutes. The neck flexion extension exercise on the PowerCore XL1000 uses the same global adaptation principle as the setup. By using a specialized orthopedic fulcrum support used at the C5, C6 interspace allows the individual to work the neck through maximum range of motion. Not only does this exercise restore structure to the cervical spine, it also eliminates bulge discs and thoracic outlet syndrome. Anyone interested in feeling the amazing benefits and results of the PowerCore XL1000, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to get you on this equipment and let you feel what it's like to maximize your core structure. I'm Aaron Forbes, Director of Player Development for PowerCore XL. Have a great day.